5.30. So let's call this meeting to order. And uh, you want to do a roll call? Sure. to approve the April agenda. So moved. Um, Second. And we have a uh, discussion. All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, all right, approval of the March minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? No, so approval. Four the minutes. Um, second? Second. Steve, um, discussion. Just with adding on the county executive candidates' presentation. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Got that. <laughs> present day Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. All those in favor of approving the March minutes with that correction of the word <coughs> presentation signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Say aye. All right. Um, moving on to the March treasurer's report. Can we get a motion to accept it? So moved. Jim? Second? Second. Randy? Second. All right, discussion, questions? The uh, only question I had was, do you know the fire department budget's half spent already? Yeah. <laughs> it's at 48%. Um, that was uh, the only thing that I noticed. Um, That's all they could hear you, Bob. Yeah. yeah. All right, any other comments or discussion, questions? All right, and hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any signs? All right, uh, acceptance of the April spring election results. I actually don't know if we need to do a formal motion because no, our clerk really. certified the, uh, the results. Mm -hmm. But I, by my uh, estimate, we got a 64% turnout, if my math is correct, which is always questionable. But uh, I think a 64% turnout is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so very good, and congratulations to Randy and to Charm, who we have sitting in back here, who will be joining the board. And uh, as we say, adios to Gordon. Um, anyway, so I think we can move on. Um, well, I guess, let me ask, does someone want to make a motion to accept the uh, spring election report? I don't know if so it's necessary. I don't think yeah. it's necessary. Okay, it's, it's all, yes. Yeah, all right. everybody in favor of accepting it just signify by saying aye. Right. Okay. But nobody has a problem with it, right? Okay, all right. Okay. Now, discussion of possible action on proposals for civil engineering survey construction <coughs> services. We have two in our packet. Um, for um, purposes of our minutes, um, I had called AECOM, which I reported last month. I had called AECOM, um, I think, three times and never got a return phone call. Um, Steve also uh, called. I spoke with uh, Reichert and Milky. Yeah, I'll talk about that, you know, after you know, okay. we proceed. Here. Okay. All right. Um, so we have our <coughs> proposals, and we have uh, our... Um, Dan St. Pierre and Dave Grahalski. Gladowski. Gladowski, my apologies. Um, <laughs> here with us to answer questions. How would the board like to proceed? Has everyone had a chance to take a look at these? Much of it that I can understand. Yeah, it's, um, it's difficult because they're not really apples to that's, apples. That's correct. It's quite different sort of way of approaching it. I don't know if perhaps Dan could speak to <laughs> how we should look Perhaps at I could. I suspect that you might want me to. <laughs> yeah. Um, Give us, uh, maybe you can help us clarify. Uh, well, I'm going to, I, I made some, some notes here and I'll go through these one at a time and I just have some, I mean, they're both um, good pro proposals, I think, but I just have some questions on them. Uh, Dan's is a little different than Dave's. Uh, so with POBs, <clears throat> uh, everything on page three is fine. Page four, um, I just made a note that we uh, will need the driveways. We should specify that we need the driveways surveyed. I'm 
assuming that was the intent, but it wasn't specifically noted. Um, and you're going through POB, right? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, this okay. is POB. Thank you. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Yeah, and as far as the construction documents, uh, um, Dan uh, has a little different, uh, the way he's detailed the, 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 the plan is, is a little different than, uh, than Dave in that it's not as roadway plan oriented, it's more site development oriented. So I, I think the intent is there, but it's not real clear exactly what the plan uh, is. I think Dan knows what the plan is, but it, but it's not clear in according to this. Uh, um, uh, for example, a roadway plan will typically have roadway cross typical cross sections and and cross sections and plan <coughs> sheets and and uh, I mean he's got the specifications noted here. That's good. Uh, detail sheets is good. Um, it's just a little. Um, I think we probably end up with the same looking plan with either one. It's just the way Dan describes it here is a little different. Um, street lights are not noted specifically and maybe should be as far as the detail sheets. Uh, we still looking at I think the You're still looking still at Still going through POVs, okay. yes. I'm still on page five. Okay. Um, Permit preparation, Dan has uh, this uh, notice of intent with the DNR. Uh, and this is something that uh, I believe, I mean, you have it in here, Dan. Is that something we know we're going to need if we do your proposed scope? Or uh, Yes, because just the ditch grading alone will add up to more than an acre of disturbance, so we would need to apply for an NLI. Okay, and that's... The only reason I ask that is because that's, that's noted as uh, may be needed in days, uh, and I'll note that later, but uh, you know that it would be extra work. So that isn't included in his. Um, yeah, and then in the last paragraph here, they just re uh, Dan's refers to uh, um, client review, and in this case, there is no other client. There's only the municipality. Um, I can share all these notes for with Kathy later if you guys want them. Um, for construction services, uh, Dan doesn't go specifically into managing the bid, which is something important that we would need you to do. Um, so that would need to be included. Uh, and that may be just a matter of we weren't necessarily clear that we wanted that service. Uh, I, I don't know for sure why you didn't include it, but... I do want to make a comment about the electrical real fast. Um, okay. We do not have electrical engineers on our staff, so mm -hmm. that would be an additional cost to hire an electrical engineer to move forward. With regards and, to the streetlights? With regards yeah. to the streetlights. Okay. Probably easier if you guys did it direct, um, but we can definitely coordinate with them to make that process. But that is not included specifically. Okay. Okay, and then, and then lastly on page seven, uh, meetings and site visits. Uh, uh, Dan isn't as specific as far as the frequency of site inspections as, as Dave is. Um, it's just not broken down and itemized as much uh, as far as the level of inspection. So that's not quite as clear there. Um, I just have a question here. Okay, in terms of the request for proposal that you received, uh, was lighting, you know, discussed? And uh, lighting was required. mentioned, but we specifically left it off because, like I said, we do not have electrical engineers mm -hmm. on our staff. Yeah. It, it, it probably would have been helpful if you had gotten a formal RFP, but I don't have a, an RFP. <laughs> we don't have somebody on staff to create an RFP or oversee it, so it was a phone call and a couple of emails. Yeah, and I think that's why there's there's some differences here, right. one of the reasons. So that's all I had for comments on POBs. And for programmers, uh, 
as far as uh, one thing that, and I'm not familiar with this, but one thing that Dan mentioned was <coughs> as far as the DNR permitting goes, if we go in and, 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 and remove down to base, basically reconstruct the base, uh, it's going to open a can of worms as far as the storms uh, maybe requiring higher level storm sewer treatment. <coughs> and I don't know, Dave, maybe you could comment on that, what you know? Yeah, or it, if, if our intent is to put back was there, that's really not called land disturbance and an NOI wouldn't be needed. Now if we're doing ditching and it adds up to be more than an acre, which I doubt that it would, you know, then an, an, an NOI would be needed. It's, it's included in my proposal, whether we have to do an NOI with a DNR or not. I'm going to guess that we don't need to. Yeah. Because we're pretty much, I'm assuming from what I've been hearing, is that pretty much putting back what's there, we just want to improve the pavement, improve the drainage. Uh, I know there's a block that's bad. Do what we can to improve that. And, and with that, we probably don't hit the limits for the DNR permit. I think that's a big deal either way. They, they wouldn't require any post construction stormwater management anyways, you know, and all the during construction type erosion control would be included either anyways, so I don't see it as a big deal yeah. either way. Yeah, it I guess I'm not sure whether personally whether a permit is uh, yeah, I just did four of them, or not, I just did four of them very similar and and we did not need a, a DNR permit. Hmm. In other municipalities yeah. around here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my, you know, I, I'm in, I guess I'm anticipating we'll do swaling, which you're calling ditching, I'm yeah. calling swaling, which I think is a little less intrusive. But <laughs> sure. I don't know. Um, more, more resident friendly and political. More resident right? friendly. How about that? Yeah. Um, Swale along the edge of the road. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, you know, a, a good percentage of the houses of the residents already have it. They already have swaling because we've been actively doing swaling for the last couple of years to try to deal with um, getting the water off the roads. But I sent both of you those photos of that intersection um, uh, in the 400 block of Linwood that is just, it was terrible this year. I mean the water was about this deep in the middle of it and it was, uh, and we, we actually had to get um, lighting out there to um, barricaded off a little bit. Right. And, and you'll see that, I mean, you see it in Stevens Point all the time. They're trying to retrofit some of these swales just to store the water. And obviously that's a situation where you have more water coming in than just yeah. the front yards <laughs> and the roadway. It's probably coming down the other side streets. And, and so we just got to increase the storage availability there. So, yeah. And by the nature of, let's say if we pulverize this roadway and then we put a little more base and we just repave, that road's going to raise up, you know, six to eight inches. And all of a sudden, you're already going to have a little more storage just with that alone. Okay. So we don't have to do substantial swaling, you know, but you do need to do something to keep the road dry because obviously that's the most important part to a good road is is proper drainage. Okay. Does the type of uh, pavement that we ultimately put in have any kind of bearing in terms of the drainage, you know, the surface material? I mean, the ultimate finished coat. I mean, Not really. I'm assuming it's going to be asphalt. Uh, okay. So, are there differing types of asphalt? I mean, some that are more porous than others that allow. Yeah, nothing that we would utilize in Wisconsin traditionally. Mm -hmm. so. Do you yeah. want to go through? Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. finish going through here okay. quickly. Um, yeah, I was going to say too, our, our goal is to probably keep the bases. They do have porous pavements, but we're not going to want to try to promote water making them into our subgrades, so we're going to go with a pretty standard cross section for asphalt. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, okay, for back on Dave's here, uh, page two of survey. Um, again, they, uh, we would need driveway profiles to make sure that we have a decent match and don't have excessive driveway removal to make them fit. Um, uh, bidding phase is in here, which is good. Uh, level of inspection on page four, they've got construction phase, that's spelled out. And I agree with those as far as the level uh, of coverage for construction inspection. Um, on page five, number seven, uh, it talks about funding and there's an $11,000 LRIP grant that's not mentioned, that's 
probably because we didn't tell Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, um, let me talk about the permit. Um, as far as materials, uh, um, owner's responsibility, that would be, you know, things that the village would provide on page six. Um, I'm willing to help with that if uh, <coughs> you'd like me to. Um, and as far as uh, compensation, one thing to note is uh, I believe Dan's uh, or POB's uh, bottom line uh, as far as their cost includes inspection, is that correct? Correct. So that's an estimated level yeah. of inspection and you've got those hours in there? Yeah, for our construction services, if you go to the actual the lump sum breakup fee, it says how many visits we're planning on including... Okay, uh, maybe, it, maybe it is in there then and I just missed it. Page nine. Okay, so, <coughs> yeah. So then I, then I would note that um, with Dave's, with, with Grammer's, um, he's got the hourly rate listed here, but that's not, I believe, figured into the cost. Correct. 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 So that's. Uh, can seems like a appropriate time. Can can you give us an idea based on your experience? What on on page at the bottom of page six, you've got civil engineering seventy eight dollars an hour, um, engineering specialist sixty five. Can you give us an idea on a project like this? What sorts of expenses, what that might amount to? Sure, and that's why, I mean, again, trying to be fair with each other. Mm -hmm. Do, are we talking full-time inspection? Are we talking part-time inspection? Are we talking, you know, I know what we've done numerous times, but do I know what my competitor is going to put into a proposal? So that's why I can certainly give you an estimate. And I could, I have it with me, but I don't know if, you know, if we're comparing apples to apples. Because, because maybe somebody thinks that this is a two month long construction period and maybe it's only a month long. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of variables that go into it. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna give you what you guys ask for and what's required of by the contractor. Uh, and I can guess what that is, but you know, is the contractor going to do a great job and, sure. and move along quickly, or is he going to take forever and, and all of a sudden it's twice as long? So, sure. and and okay. what's what is POV covering and what you know? So that's why it's it's a little tricky. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. It's it's a little bit of a of a guess. I mean, we want <laughs> that's why when you go, when you go by rate when you go by rate, you know, assuming that you have to deliver a certain amount of time you know, the rate becomes, you know, the, the deciding factor, kind of. Sure, okay. So, but but I probably fair to say your total price here is going to be higher. We just don't well, you could Well, you could compare, yeah, I would say it's that, but um, you could compare. Yeah, definitely. The construction phase, assuming <laughs> you guys want us in bo on board, keeping track of the contractor, make sure he's doing it for plan, we're using the right materials. Yes, definitely. So... So yeah. something like yeah. that you as wouldn't as, normally and have. As far as POB rates, if you want to compare to grammar rates, they're on, and Dan's included them here as an exhibit, so you can compare that way. You talk about full-time versus part-time. I wouldn't think something like this you'd want someone standing out there the, the entire time. You know, typically when it's like the removals, you know, you want to be out there helping them for the socket that's up. The grading is definitely part-time, especially if there's a lot of grading. Uh, paving, you definitely want full-time. You want you know, want them to make sure, because it's only gonna be two days worth or a day's worth of paving. So, so yeah, I mean, definitely use common sense on, you're not standing around, you know, it would just be, we have an office, you know, two blocks from here, so we just buzz out here in the morning, check at lunchtime, you know, just to make sure things are proceeding as needed. Yeah, page page four, as as I mentioned, his construction and administration. He's got removals part time, grading part time, stormwater work full time, which I agree with because we need the swales right. Um, road base work part time and paving full time. I, so these are, you know, it makes sense. I, and you don't, and Dave's right. You don't really know what hours are going to be required. Um, so, on a project like this, what happens with the end of driveways? 
which are technically on our right of way, I believe. I would, we haven't really talked about that specifically, but I guess my thought is we would hold the road profile, the middle of the road profile as close to where it is now as we could, which would mean the, the outer edge would raise some, but not, you know, not six inches. So you, you would have, so that would minimize how far you would need to cut back driveways. But basically driveways would need to be saw cut back and then patched back in with asphalt at, at a distance that makes a good blend. So basically we would be doing that and if someone already has <coughs> cement there or something else, then they would have to do it themselves or I don't know. Well, <clears throat> typically on state projects we replace in kind. Uh, if we take out concrete, we put back concrete. This is a little different in that we don't have well, you don't have curb and gutter, you don't have sidewalk, you don't really have a defined line. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend is that we tie them all back in with asphalt and, and they're not going to be back terribly far, but like ours, for example, is sidewalk right out to the edge of the road pavement and it really shouldn't be. It should be to a point, concrete, and then with a, with a a blend of apron that's that's asphalt because there's no curb there. Okay. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Who and we pay for that? The village pays for that. The village pays for replacing that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we're gonna cut it out in the right of way, we gotta at least put it back to what it was. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I guess stick homeowners and, and I bill guess. for. Right, right. Right. They're not gonna be billed. I guess the the only question is do. And, and it's up to the village. It's not up to me. I mean, it, do we put it, back? It's gone both ways. We've yeah. done projects where they do replace concrete with concrete or they replace it all with asphalt. It's purely a decision you guys have to make prior to construction. Yeah, if you're okay with having concrete right out to the edge of your road, then replace them all in kind of the way they are now. And it'll oh, wow. probably function fine, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's <laughs> going to cost the village less probably if they don't pour concrete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think so. And, but it is typically a big deal because, yes. and there's a lot of concrete drivers out there, but you know, the, the homeowner's gonna say, I put concrete there, you didn't give me concrete back, but you're all within the right of way. So you guys may as a village wanna come up with an ordinance or a policy, you know, that says, this is what we're doing on this project and all projects moving forward. And mm -hmm. I do agree with not sticking the village with concrete just because the property owners put concrete off the road. We do it with a lot of municipalities. And at the end of the day, if we can just put back the road surface. So if it's asphalt, it's asphalt. And yes, if you're going deep into the lots, you're going, you know, 20, 30 feet, it's a big deal. If you're only going five feet, you know, and you have just a little flare of asphalt, you know, matching your nice concrete driveway, mm -hmm. it's, it's usually acceptable. But you're still gonna have some people that don't like it. So. Oh, we have a question. Here, I have a yeah. question. Yeah. Um, you're talking about maybe raising the road six to eight inches by the time this is all done, or the. the well, that's what that's what Dave suggested, but I, I'm suggesting not. Um, well, as just person for with that reason, with the husband who is in a wheelchair, I'm very concerned about the angle in which this is going to go up to the road. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you are going to add, replace, we have blacktop, so this is going to be a smooth angle that's going up to the road? Um, Definitely. Level? Whatever, uh, the, the road grade at the edge of the road in most areas will come up some, just because there's, the road is, is has too much crown right now. Right. So it will come up some. I would suggest that we minimize that, and, and then the driveways will be cut back as needed to make sure it's a, a, a flatter slope back into the driveway and not deep. And what is this going to do with the water coming down off the road then if we don't have a swale in our yard? Are we going to... Well, there, will, there will be a swale in your yard. I think the everybody, there'll be a consistent swale from, from Main Street all the way down to You're kidding. Ridge. Very expensive. Roads are very expensive. Got to do things to take care of them, and getting water off of them is the first and 
I mean, even Dave even mentioned that a couple minutes ago. Um, All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I guess at this point, how you do you want to talk about the um, your contact with? Rick? Well, I think you know after a bit. Uh, I don't think it's appropriate. Okay, to discuss this now. I think this is a little unorthodox. Okay as to how we proceeded. Normally when you have a request for proposal, you have each of the entities come in and uh, present. And then after you have that discussion, okay, then you sit down and try to find uh, individuals such as Dan, who's got the common denominator. It, this I find probably if I was sitting in either one of these two chairs, I'd be a little uneasy, okay, you know, about this. And, you know, the thing is, is that I understand, you know, we don't necessarily have anybody for a request for a proposal. And, of course, in my uh, preliminary discussion, okay, that uh, came up. And so I came to find, okay, what had been presented to both of these individuals and uh, there was none, okay. So what can I say, you know, to, uh, you know, Reichert and Milky, okay, when I don't have, you know, a document that's going to have information that's equitable to both or all three parties, okay, overall. And, uh, you know, so I have some problems with this. And I would tend to agree. I mean, we can't, it's kind of hard to compare mm -hmm. apples and oranges at this point. Um, I just, I don't think this village has ever done this before. No. Uh, ever. That is the that's problem. problem. That's, that's, that's the problem. Why it's yeah. come together and this I, way. I, yeah. I, yeah. To be fair to everyone involved, um, uh, we would want to compare apples to apples to apples or apples to apples. Um, and I, I just haven't had enough time to look at both of these and see what part of it's not so much apple and more orange. Um, I think Dan kind of Dan Holloway kind of explained what right. how the differences are, but um, yeah. So well, shall we table it till next month and discuss it again next month? I how do you want to proceed? I mean, in, in fairness to the two gentlemen that came today. Is there more information we could give you, any more that we could glean from you guys that, that this has differed so greatly from maybe other projects you've done that you feel that, you know, we need, we needed, you needed more information to make a, a good bid for us or? To make it easier on you guys, normally what we would get is an RFP that lays out the number of hours you're anticipating, what you want to see as final documentation. Do you want a topo? What does that topo include? And that way, when either of us provide you guys a number, it's very comparable. It is, you know exactly right. what you're getting. What you asked for is what you're getting. And then normally, you guys would meet <clears throat> on your own, make a decision of which person you'd like to go with, or you would have people come in and interview if you have a top <clears throat> two or top three. And then at these meetings, you can normally make a resolution of, you know, we're looking to go with POB or with uh, grammar at this meeting. There's not really. It's it's not normal for me and that's Dave that's to be sitting here. Right. That's what I said. Right. Yeah. You know. I guess my my. You've explained. You got Linwood Avenue from here to here, and you want to reconduct, resurface, recondition, reconstruct mm -hmm. something. There's some drainage problems. It's pretty simple. I I do projects like this all the time, and sometimes I'm just hired based on my quality. Sometimes I have to compete by numbers. Uh, but I'm fine with it. I mean, it's a pretty simple project, and I mean, we do them all the time. Uh, you've requested a proposal from three. I think that's state statute. You've hit that. And, uh, you know, and, and I, uh, I, I don't need any more information because this is what we do, and, and I can do it. So. Okay. In, in talking it over, you know, we, we, we said we wanted to move forward with something. So Dan and I talked about it. I said, so what do I do? He said, well, pick up the phone and call them. And and so that's what I did. Is I yeah. picked up the phone. It's I had part, essentially part, partly my fault because I didn't really give a lot of guidance. I <laughs> but you know I had essentially the same conversation mm -hmm. with both of you. I said, come take a look at Linwood. Here's some pictures. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. The only you know, problem. The only problem is is that you know you didn't involve the other trustees. Okay, to sit down and say, well, what are we going to come up with? Okay, what do we want to present? Okay. Mm -hmm talked about that. Oh, no, we didn't. Okay, if we came up with a tentative plan, okay, in the comprehensive planning thing, okay, that we went forward, but we sure didn't come up with, okay, an RFP. 
No, we did not come up with an RFP. That's, That's right. Correct. We did not. And I, I, we did not. Um, I guess, how would you like to proceed at this time? Do we want to table this to have a, a special meeting to talk about this more? Well, I think we need a special meeting, okay, particularly to talk about the third option. Have we received a proposal from them, or did we just call well, them? Well, uh, there was no proposal okay. because we have an RFP. Okay. Um, and what I didn't know is what was said okay to either of these gentlemen. Yes. You know, because I want it to be equitable. How would you all like to proceed? Let these guys go and um, yeah, I would uh, schedule a special uh, definitely thank them. Okay. Yes. And, uh, thank you very uh, much, both of you, for I certainly apologize for somewhat of the awkward position that we've placed you in, but uh, I think you know we need to uh, you know do our homework here just a little bit. Okay, come together as to what was truly put out, so that if we have a, another discussion, we've got something you know in writing to present. Do we want to do a special meeting on it? I think. Well, I think you need this as a singular topic. Okay, I don't think you ever accomplish anything. Okay, you know. In ten minutes. You have it as a, right. Okay. Your thoughts. Jimmy, feelings on Jim? No. We need a special meeting. We should have a special meeting. It's fine with me. I'm going to be done after today. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, then, thank you both for what you've put together for us. And uh, it, it, it seemed to me to be kind of the, kind of what you described, repaving of a road, what we had talked about at the comprehensive um, planning committee, that repaving a road, doing the lights and sway lights. Um, but uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we'll be back in touch with you as to how we're going to proceed. Yeah. So. I guess I would ask that if it is a numbers game then obviously the numbers need to be kept quiet yep. and correct. absolutely so, correct yes so if there's yes. another party involved or not i mean yeah no obviously. absolutely it has to be totally right. and then again i mean checking preferences and quality you know qualification and stuff might be important too if you're getting to that point so yeah all right okay thank you thank you very much thank you thank you for coming tonight both of you does anybody know how to do RFP? I mean, I, if I attempt this, does anybody even know um, how to put Maybe that could be a discussion at our special meeting here. Okay, in the next sorry. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, sorry. I do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can write a perfect one. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Do we want to schedule that now, or should we wait on it? Let's wait. Let's wait. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. oh, we do. Yes. Yeah. So the update on the raw development. Yes. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Dan. Next yep. item. Is that what you're waiting for? Yeah. Um, so I have had uh, several telephone calls with the city and um, waiting to hear back from One Piece. And then there's a document that says, oh shoot, I didn't, I didn't get it done yet today. Um, there's a, a, a document that says that we agree <coughs> with the city sewer and that uh, that's about it. And I, I got an email from Joel Lemke saying that everything looks good, everything looks fine, he's got the plans, everything looks like it's up to the city specs. He's perfectly fine, but he said, I need to get a phone call from the DNR. And he said, once he gets that phone call from the DNR, then he will get back to me, and then that document will get signed. Okay. Does, that, does that work? Yep. <laughs> and uh, we have been working on... No, uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's a letter that goes with this. This is, this is the document that they have presented, that P.O., um, sorry, um, that Rao has presented, and 
we just have to sign off on it. And they want us to put it on letterhead saying that we agree. Um, I don't know, do you want to speak to this at all? What this is? Do you, are you familiar? It's not your, I know it's not yeah. your project. I mean, it's pretty standard. It's just the town has the right to review projects, um, even though they've been reviewed at higher levels. Um, they have been approved by the DNR. The project is approved by state DSPS and the DNR already at this point. Um, it depends. Some towns are comfortable signing off on it. Some prefer to have an engineer just check over it. It's purely up to you guys to decide one way or the other. Yeah. I, and when I talked to Joel, Joel said, this is so basic and so standard. He said, I would, he said, you can feel comfortable, but he said, I just need to hear back from the DNR before. So that's kind of where, where it's at. Um, so do we need a motion to put the agreement on letterhead and send it in, or? Um, Do you have that? Is that? Oh. That's not. No, no that's no, not that's the letter. That's else. the other thing. Um, let me see what I make you, Do you have that? Yeah, this is it. Okay, so it's a letter that's to James Lundberg of Point of Beginning. It says, Dear Mr. Lundberg, your construction plans designed for the proposed sanitary sewer and main extension which is all city stuff, mm -hmm. to service the Francisco Estates Development dated 22618, prepared for Rao Builders, are hereby approved by the Village of Park Ridge for submittal to the Wisconsin DNR. The Village of Park Ridge will accept ownership of the sanitary sewer and water main extensions upon completion and approval of construction. And um, they had asked Kathy to sign this, and I said, I don't think that's a Kathy thing. I think that's like... Who signed it last time? I don't think we, we don't have a copy of this in the file from last time. We, we, also, we also have a builder's agreement that never got signed in the file last time. And we were actually, we've been working on doing a new builder's agreement and actually getting signatures this time. Okay. But this is not in, there's nothing like this in the file. Sure. So, so you said all the approvals from the state and from the DNR and... Uh, this is the one that's waiting on, so one of the requirements to submit to the DNR for a sanitary extension or a water main extension is that the city approve, or the town approves of what we're going to be installing. Okay. They're still going to review it for thoroughness to oh, make sure, sure it meets sure. all the codes. Right. Right. You're more or less saying we agree with what is being submitted. Okay. And then ultimately we accept ownership of that sure, once right. it's done by Rao Builders. So if you would like to make a motion to accept that and sign this, that would be great. Who wrote that letter? That's what I'm. I thought you they, were reading. They the copy. wrote the letter. Okay. Yeah, they actually. Okay. I thought wrote you were reading a copy of it, and so that's why I asked why who signed it last time. But that's. Oh. That's what they wrote for us to, to sign. Yeah, that's just our generic okay. template yeah. that we handle. Yep. The okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I make a motion that could we move forward with that letter. I'll second, second it. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And that was, I think, Randy and Steve. It was kind of like a unison yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, let's get on to something more See interesting. You, Thank you, guys. Thank nice. you. Thank you, Dan. Dog licenses. Uh, is there a motion to accept the 2018 dog license report? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, Gordon. Stephen Gordon. Okay. Stephen Gordon. All right. Building inspector's report. Um, motion to accept the building inspector's report. So, so moved. Randy and uh, is there a second? Second. Steve. Uh, discussion. Um, is it next home priority or new home priority? I I, I saw that this was written out to new. NH priority, and um, then on the report, it's new home priority. I'm assuming it's next home priority because that's who moved into 20 Park Ridge. Yes, that um, was my mistake. Okay. I just okay. wanted to make sure we don't have another sign that we're. No, no, this oh, is okay. the sign right over there. Putting a building there. permit in for Okay. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right. Uh, acceptance of the first quarter fire chief's report. Can we get a motion? So moved. Jim, second? Second. Gordon, 
uh, discussion, questions? I think the fire chief sitting right here. Uh, elaborate on it at all, Brian? I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. Happy to talk about any particular section. Um, I, the last page on equipment, the I'm going to mispronounce it, the SBCA. SCBA compressor? Yeah, you have SBCA. Is that a, is it supposed to be SC, like SC, self-contained breathing apparatus. Got it. Um, <coughs> My error. Have you, no biggie. Um, do you have a, a cost? Have you figured that out? Yeah, yeah. I know it's got a burn, the fourth, it's got four <coughs> cylinders, and the fourth is burned, but I do not have a cost. What? To be determined. Do you have a, to replace it all together? I know you said Dewey doesn't even uh, have We've one. repaired this before. <coughs> yeah. It's going to be a recurrent problem. <coughs> Compressor is not designed to do what we're making it do. Yeah. Um, see how I can make this a short story. It's a very unique compressor. The only, the closest repair service prior to Chance we found is out of Minnesota. It's uh, this. For instance, the nuts and bolts on it—they're not metric. They're not standard. They're their own German-type tool. Um, Chief Slicer picked it up dirt cheap, like $1,500, and it's normally a $20,000 unit. Um, as I wrote, I think I wrote in here that it was, you know, retrofitted before we got it, so it runs really hot. Um, <clears throat> we have to have the air tested quarterly. I mean, it always performs and passes the air tests and all that, but it's just one of those things that um, it's doing more than it's designed to do, but when it works. Exceeding the specs. Yeah. Okay. Um, some departments, yeah, they don't. So then, like, we've had to fill up a couple of times. We drive the squad over to Hall and fill up with air. You know, I don't know all what departments have a compressor and which departments don't because they are not cheap. So a lot of your smaller departments just borrow air from your bigger departments. Okay. All right. Any further questions, discussion? On the yeah, list? I am. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So I wanted to congratulate Colin for his promotion. So does that mean you have two officers now besides yourself? Yep, we used to have two captains with Captain Slicer and Captain Kraft, and now we have Captain Kraft and Lieutenant Wilson. Okay. Um, We're back fully staffed with our supervisory ranks. Okay. I'm still a little confused about this number on the roster. Um, you said there are 18 at the end of quarter four. I think in the last few meetings you've been using the figure 19, and since the end of quarter four, if my recollections are correct, you've had one retirement and one resignation. So does that mean we now have 16? No, we should be at 18, because I double-checked it, but we had two started in November, so I, I mean two of them started in the fourth quarter, if that makes your numbers well, drive. I'm so I finished sure fourth quarter with 18, but I don't know. And does that mean, I guess what's important with the fire department is how many of you are certified to be able to enter a burning building. Um, so if you haven't completed the first entry level class, then you're not allowed to, is that correct? correct. You have to have at least the entry level class to enter a burning building. So does that mean there are four here that no. haven't? Or? Right now we all can go except for one one of our senior persons is an MPO, he's a motor pump operator only, and okay. a fire inspector. But right now, every single person has the bare minimum training they need to do their jobs in our department. Hmm. That's good. What's the name of that basic course? Entry. So it says on here we have two that recently completed entry level, that's mm -hmm. the basic course. Okay. And then what we aspire to train everybody to is the state certified firefighter one which just carries a bit more credentials, I guess, and gives you actual <coughs> state certification rather than a mid-state course completion certificate. So six, 16 are at the state level firefighter one or above? Is that right? Should be. Yeah, I'd have to go through and crunch those numbers. But, um, so we have a handful that have completed the firefighter one but have not tested out, so I don't think we're at 16. Oh, okay. We're probably uh, 12 or 14 that are at the firefighter one. Um, it's not an easy class to pass and get certified, which is 
why I try to set the bar the best to minimum because it, it gives me a level of comfort that they actually know their stuff a lot more than the entry level mm -hmm. mid state certificate does. Does that answer your question? You, Gordon? I think so. Okay, any, anything else? Any other <coughs> discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the fourth quarter um, fair chiefs report, they can have the same way. Aye. Aye. Um, so the last meeting, we didn't accomplish much, and uh, I was frustrated by that, and I, I put together the email that I uh, sent out to all of you about, mm, I don't know, a week ago, and I had sent it to Brian, I don't know, two weeks ago, um, Kathy Boudelier and I had talked. Kathy was um, chaired up the um, committee that oversaw the fire department um, long range planning committee, I think it was called, uh, a couple of years ago. And so I, I just said to her, you know, help me put together kind of just a framework to start a discussion. Just, just to start the discussion. And so we put together these questions. Brian very thoughtfully um, answered with very um, complete answers. I then, just this afternoon, actually in the last couple hours, I tried to, and Brian, did you, I, I emailed this to you, did you get it? I saw it at 525 and yeah. printed it off. That's about when I, I got finished with it about 10 minutes past five. Yeah, the Kathy thing. So this, is really important to say draft because what I did, Brian hasn't reviewed this or made changes. <clears throat> I just took, I had all these words that were in his big email and his responses, which were, I was uh, very, very, this was great, very helpful. And um, I took the numbers and I just put the numbers in a grid, um, which now Kathy gave you a copy of. And do you, do you have a copy of this, too? Sure. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, and it is for no other reason other than just to start a conversation. My question for everybody here is, how do you wish to proceed tonight? As board members, I think it's important that we understand what we're talking about financially as we spend taxpayer dollars and uh, that we have a, a firm understanding of what we're committing ourselves to which is uh, you know that's our role and so I I plugged out these numbers and I don't know if Brian wants to comment but I guess my question for you all is how would you like to proceed this evening in our agenda that allows us to proceed with any decision making tonight. Um, I, like, you know, about the... I guess it would depend on what that would be. Discussion on possible, possible action on the fire department future planning questionnaire, so that, is that what we're restricted um, to? It does say questionnaire on there, I guess I... So that yeah. kind of restricts us to that, that, that decision right there. Yeah, we probably should have just ended with the word future. Yeah. <laughs> that's um that's my fault in that um Yeah, I really didn't mean for it to be just restricted onto this. That was not my intention. I thought we might move <coughs> things forward tonight. That was really my intention. I don't know, how would you all like to proceed? Well, we approved the agenda as written, so So we can't change it. Um, which, which is, yeah, I didn't really, uh, intend for that, if not to, yeah, I always, I'm the one that approves the agenda. Um, so why don't we make a note, let's put this, um, I mean, we can have discussion on this, this 
questionnaire right here, according to that. Um, and then I'm assuming this is part of the questionnaire, this graph or this. Um, well, like I said, all I did was. So we like, can discuss this. I also. took his answers yeah. um, and I tried to plug them in, and he has not had a chance to look sure. at this. I wrote some notes. And respond as to whether I'm on the mark or off the mark or. Sure. Um, cool. <laughs> so, so let's make sure we get it on at least next month's agenda. Or if if we think this is something that we need, just like the roads, and I think the roads are more money, but this is still a very big thing. If we need another special meeting, I mean, I don't show up at home anyway, so. We could put two things on the special meeting agenda. We could, but that could end up being a pretty long yeah, special yeah, agenda. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You've got to take these one at a time here. You know, okay. so that, yeah. that's that would be my... Suggestion. Yeah. I, I have uh -huh. to say, I really did not intend for us this to limit us tonight. That was a planning questionnaire. I just, yeah. Anyway. Well, Brian, would you like to speak to this? Sure. Why don't you? Why don't so you? Mind you, this is like a elaborate. ten minute review, all right? Um, I get. And I know this is a draft, but we're not replacing <coughs> engine one and two. Actually, engine two is the one that we want to replace, so they're kind of, depends how you skin the cat, they're kind of reverted, but, sure. you know, the current engine one is going to become the engine two, two. but it's, mm -hmm. right. you know, it's, we're not replacing two vehicles. Sure. Right. Um, the other thing, briefly, so this column here with Ron saying he saved $300,000. That was not just limited to vehicle maintenance, that was with grants and everything, so for instance, um, down below it talks about SCV and gear. Um, in Ron's tenor, they got FEMA grants that replaced all of our SCVA. They got FEMA grants that replaced all of the department's gear. So those, the 300000 it says, he said 300000 over 30 years. Is that $10 a year? Um, that was his career total, not just vehicle maintenance, and that's over there. I don't have... The fire department budget in front of me, so I don't know exactly um, off the top of my head what we have. But one would hope, and I don't have a crystal ball, but it should make sense as we start upgrading our equipment, our maintenance should go down. That seems to me to make, make sense. A new mm -hmm. truck should take less maintenance than an old truck. Um, the role that says pay point system for firefighters. I'm not sure where the 3500 is. It was at 6,997 in 2017, and I think we added like $700 to that. So that's that's over $7,000 um, currently for the point cost. Okay. It originally had been suggested at ten thousand dollars, but then it was. Yeah, uh, and I, you know, I wrote that yeah. in my yeah, I saw that. kind of dissertation. Yeah. I guess if you want to call it that, trying to answer the question, but the thirty-five hundred is not even close. Um, it was designed for a six thousand five hundred payout when we started, but the sixty-nine mm -hmm. ninety-seven makes up for to, taxes or whatever. To get it to ten thousand now, and and I don't know what that number is either. Is it, it, it to get it to ten thousand? Is it like twenty-five hundred bucks? It'd be about that because we were at sixty nine ninety seven and I think we added seven hundred for twenty eighteen. Yeah. Which twenty eighteen was the first time that that increased in three years since we've had mm -hmm. a point system. Yeah. Um, the SCVA compressor, um, confident yeah. we can repair it. We'll probably have to keep repairing it every three years. It's just what it's designed to do, but it's still a lot cheaper than spending twenty thousand for a new one. Is that ever on the used? Or don't you ever buy something like that and use the... Uh, no, we could buy something like that used, especially, you know, I'd want to know why the department sold it. Well, that, so if they got a new one on a grant, then I wouldn't be so afraid to buy their buy old it. one. Absolutely. But if they're getting rid of their old one because it's a maintenance, then I don't need mm -hmm. one. And that's something, too, once we... How do I say this nicely? Once we settle down with the fire department to start going after some of those grants, um, that's something that's a safety thing because it's the air that we breathe, so it ups the odds to you know, it be does. successful, right. um, especially on the bigger grants. So that's something, again, once you know we settle some of the fire stuff down and we can give some resources to that, we should get back on the, I want to get back on the, at least trying to get some grants. Um, the turnout gear, 10 year life, um, by standard we're supposed to replace it in 10 years. And I think the 50000 because it's about 
2500 bucks a set. So if we had a brand new set today, it should be replaced in 10 years. Um, and obviously we just spent $8,000 on gear. So in 10 years, if that gear lasts, because we do have gear that doesn't last 10 years, six years old and we tear out a new year or something like that, and it just doesn't, it's really hard to fix that gear. Uh, breathing bottles, we just bought a bunch of those, so we should be good. I didn't get a whole lot farther with my review radio sliders. Um, the generator, I know this is something Trish asked an email if the fire department wanted to take it over. I just want to be crystal clear, currently the generator is not a fire department budgeted item, that's a village right. budgeted item. Um, I'm not entirely in favor of taking it over because I think the generator is a pain in the butt to be blunt, but um, well, that's always, how I feel about it, Brian. <laughs> I, we've always helped out. I mean, Slicer was the one that put the block heater on, the battery maintainer. Um, I was the one that came a couple weeks ago when the repair service guy was here for it. I did some troubleshooting. So right now, and I think I put this in an email to Trish, but not the whole board. The generator repair guy was here. Um, there's a 120 volt, just your standard volt um, receptacle that's in there. And that powers the battery maintainer, the battery heater, and the engine block heater. Mm -hmm. That box does not have power. Um, so when it's really cold, and he even said, you know, in the warmer weather, we could probably get by all summer without it. But guess what? It was cold. The generator was in air mode last week or the week before. It came and reset it, um, killed the power of the building, it started up, it ran just fine. It's an overcrank, so if it turns too long, like if the block heater's not working and the engine's cold, but I, uh, before I, you know, put the board on notice or the village on notice, I wanted to see if we just had a trip breaker or something. We got three different circuit breaker boxes in this building, um, but I can't find a trip breaker, so I think we're gonna have to call an electrician to get power to that box, and then that should help it start up so it doesn't go into the mm -hmm. over crank mode. Um, the last time, well, maybe a month ago, we had the service guy here, what was wrong with it? There's a speed sensor. It's basically like a magnet thing on a flywheel that measures RPMs. And because it's magnetic, it collects dust and shavings like from the flywheel and stuff. Kathy was here, so I asked the guy if that's not something they would normally do because they come annually and service it because it just seemed like it shouldn't have failed. And he says they only clean that every couple of years and it may not have gotten clean last time. So I didn't really feel the best about that. <coughs> something that could trip it out. They, maybe it wouldn't look at our contract or service agreement, that's something we want to make sure that they're catching since they're here anyway, doing preventive maintenance on it. Uh, breathing apparatus, yeah, the rest of this looks okay. Question I have on that, is that the only outfit that's able to do maintenance on something like this? It's the best outfit for the value that Slicer could find. Um, Kathy Boudelier, when she was village president, tried to get a local electrical contractor. I think she had Bushman, because usually we have Bushman and do everything and don't help me on that. Um, and Kathy Boudelier could talk to you more about that, but she tried because Ron was always doing it, take some of the burden off Ron off the fire department. And I, without speaking for Kathy, she just wasn't able to find, we got some estimates that were way out of the ballpark to do the repair that Ron said that. Ron, Ron found this person to do it for like a quarter of what, this is speaking three years ago it was broke. Mm -hmm. um, but Kathy tried and this Walter place is the best value that Slicer could find. And if Slicer says it's good, usually it's you know good enough for me type of thing. But um, I mean, you're, you're talking Kathy Boulier and other things too. She could speak to her experience and try and find somebody else. How long is the warranty on the work when they come to do something significant? I have no idea, Doc. We have a service agreement that's like a one-page thing and not very detailed. That's why I was mm. asking this guy if that mm -hmm. speed sensor mm -hmm. isn't something they do as part of PM, and he said, no, we only clean it every few years. Well, I'm thinking if it's a 10-minute job, because that's literally what it was, and you hear once a year and we're paying mm -hmm. for it, we should, probably should get that little thing clean once a year. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? What's that? Where does this? It's a company, from? Walther, like W-A-L-T-H-E-R. They're not local. I think they're from like Waukesha or something mm -hmm. like that. Right? Yeah. yeah, but You're I happen right. to have a guy, we called him here the next day and I asked the guy if he lived in town or something and he said, no, they just happened to be in the area. Mm -hmm. so, 
but I thought it was pretty good. We caught one day when he was here at 8.30 the next morning. But that so, sure. happenstance too. Right. My understanding is the reason we have this huge generator is because we need a lot to crank up the siren we have. Yeah, it's a three-phase generator. It's a three-phase siren. Mm -hmm. And I'd be the first to tell you it would be a board decision, but if the siren would fail tomorrow, I'm not sure I would lobby to replace that siren. Or could we get one that doesn't take as much to crank it up? You could, but probably at a much higher cost. I think we paid less for the siren because it was three phase. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, most people have other means than sirens today, but communities still have them, the city still supports them, the county just added them in park, so it's, you know, something that's a safety net, I guess. Mm -hmm. But that's my quick review of this spreadsheet. No. If you're getting a new fire truck, does that come with some sort of warranty for different things, or is it not? Different components, well, like the pump will probably have a different warranty than the chassis. Like if you buy a new car, your mm -hmm. Ford Taurus comes <coughs> with your bumper to bumper. <coughs> the chassis should have the warranty, and then the components will. I don't know if the builder gives anything that might vary by manufacturer, but not to put the um, cart in front of the horse, but that's probably something that when we write an RFP for that we've got to consider stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean an international <coughs> have a different warranty than a freight car does. Do you want to Any speak questions? to this process of, of um, in, in, assuming that the board approves buying a truck a custom-made truck. Can you can you talk about the process a little bit? Are you anticipating working with the village attorney to develop that RFP? Well, I think kind of like the earlier discussion, the RFP is, in in my opinion, it, in a sense, it's a legal document. I mean, that to doctors' point, if you don't keep it confidential, if you don't have some legal language built into the RFP that, you know, it's non-binding, you don't have to go for low bid and all these other things that, a, you know, a contract attorney could guide you on. That's why I think it, it's important that the RFP has to stand up so we don't get in a bind. Yeah. I mean, I think there's 101 things that could go wrong with the RFP process. Um, but then, you know, I think just like the roads, we de develop a list of specs and I think the better we can be with the specs on the fire truck, um, you know, even we have to go right down to length, width, and finished height of the truck. And it's not the chassis, it's the finished truck that has to fit in that building. You know, at 1250 pump, 1,000 gallons of water, two-person cab. And then, you know, that's something that Chance can help us a lot with before it would have been Slicer. But, you know, these guys know the different types of brakes, a 12-inch disc versus a 10-inch disc, based on, you know, how much weight you're carrying down the road with 1,000 gallons of water. But, you know, I don't think we're going to have a one-page spec sheet for a fire truck. Oh, it's going to be no. five to ten pages of spec. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might be right down to type of brake lines or something. Um, we had a rough draft of that when we got prices last time, so I think it's a matter of resurrecting what Slicer did. I would then have a chance to take a look at it. Um, Captain Kraft, maybe some senior leadership on the department, does this all make sense? And then we bake that spec sheet into the request for proposal process, send it out to at least a handful of fire truck builders, and go from there. You know, I think, you know, as the bids come in, to the contractors earlier, they have to be confidential, and then, you know, I would assume it would be, you know, the full board decision. Maybe the fire department would look at it and make the recommendation to the board that this is the builder and this is why, and then the board can challenge, well, you know, this one's $10,000 cheaper, why are you going with a $10,000 more expensive bid and some of that, you know, that little bit of two-way two -way street healthy bantering, if you will. It's kind of the way I envision it. I think we have the specs already if it's just engine two. Um, because we had to, we didn't have to request for a proposal, but we got basically, you know, estimates to build. 
which they needed some level of specs just to give us an estimate. <coughs> Do you have the um, specs? Did you have the, the RFP from the truck from 1994 when Engine 1 was purchased? I could go through the files and look. I honestly have no idea. But I would think that'd be really helpful as far as when it comes to size. And what what was important when yeah, that? Yeah, size is important now. I can look. I can tell you that a lot of the records, even employment records from 20 years ago, just are not what they should have been. But I can take a look. I'm betting Elmer has that. I bet it's at your house somewhere. <laughs> Elmer had a file cabinet full of records, which I gave to Tom Gladman. Oh. So I have no idea what happened. Oh, that's I'll bad. take a look. I'm not going to hold my breath, but there might be, there might be something. There's well, I would think that uh, that uh, spec sheet that uh, was developed, okay, here a few years back, okay, would be a good starting point, yep. and then uh, to take a look at uh, what, uh, you know, are there any things that have changed, okay, in terms of standard firefighting, you know, procedure? Do you need this? Do you need that? Okay. Well, it would give us a huge jump start, and I know Slicer is still willing to help us out too, so we have that that expertise. Um, All right. okay. I ask a question. Yeah, Brian, go ahead. I know an RFP is required, but at what point was it determined that we need a new truck instead of a used truck that fits the bill? Well, so I'll just say that kind of discussion really isn't on the agenda, and we've already had some comment about what's on the agenda and what's not on the agenda. Um, I'm, I'll take responsibility. I didn't word item number 11 very well. Um, I've had a really couple of super busy weeks at work, and uh, we did not spend as much time going through the agenda. I wish that somebody had pointed this out. Kathy updated the agenda on, on Saturday, and I, I, I apologize for item 11 not being broad enough to allow us to do much more than talk about this, because I certainly uh, had envisioned doing more. Um, so anyway. I'm, I'm not going to give you a very satisfactory answer, and I <coughs> apologize. Um, but uh, maybe next month we'll probably have a, a, a fuller discussion on that topic. Um, anyway, any more, any, any other items that, with regards to the fire department, um, information that one, anyone wants to bring up? Did you say, uh, as I look at here, do we have an AED automatic? We do. We have one okay. in our squad we bought with fundraising money. Yeah, okay. What about the thermal imaging? We got that as Same well. Same answer. We and a couple of things, uh, longevity on that type of equipment. How long will they yeah. last? A long time. Oh, okay. I mean, you're talking at least, I would hope we get at least 10 years out of both of those units. And what's their age right now? Two or three. Two or three, okay. You know, the AEDs, they reprogram them every so yeah, often. Yeah, right, right. But right. usually that they can... I've, I'm still running AEDs since 2002 with new EMS, so... Okay. All right. Um, any other discussions, questions, comments? All right. Then we'll move on to item number 12. Um, this is just information only. A couple of letters that came in that... Um, um, just for your reading edification. Um, item number 13, discussion. Uh, did anybody have any questions on either of these letters? Okay. Um, discussion, possible action. Oh, this one, yeah. back up to just one question. Sure. How would that affect uh, okay, our bottom line in terms of tax levy if uh, we're getting the, you know, the black box there? You know, where, uh, you well, know, in terms of, you know, the assessed value and what we realize. Are we okay, speaking about Walgreens. Karina's, Katrina's yeah, letter? Yeah, right, right. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think we had a discussion about this a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and this Walgreens did not really pursue Object. anything oh, like that okay. because, because taxes we, are pretty low, I our, guess. Our, our taxes are the lowest in... Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It easily the fashion. lowest in the metro area. Right. I couldn't speak to the outlying rural mm -hmm. areas. Um, 
But uh, our, uh, so just a moment of history, Walgreens actually filed a lawsuit against the city of Stevens Point and ended up litigating it uh, because their tax, their assessed value was significantly higher than ours here. And uh, they challenged it. I don't know what happened. I don't recall the mm -hmm. outcome of that legal case, but that's, that's what they do. If you assess too high, they will file a lawsuit against you, and that's what Katrina's writing about in there. Do you know their address uh, right there on the corner for Walgreens? No. Because we can right. find out, but... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right. Any Anything no. else on those two pieces of correspondence? All right, then item number 13, proposals for pruning trees around the streetlights. Everybody, um, there's three of them in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a motion for to accept one of these? Anybody want to make a motion? Well, I uh, just did you? No, that's okay. Um, right now, based on just cost, and we can discuss it. I'd make a motion to accept Eagle Tree Cares. Um, okay, Randy. Estimate. Oh, second. And Steve. All right, discussion? Uh, I've had work done by John before, and I know he, he does does a good job. Who's John? Um, for Eagle Tree Care. John Feeney. Um, John Feeney. But also, you know, Affordable has done work in the village before also. Right. Um, like that. My review of the affordable would be kind of mixed these days because it seemed like hmm. it wasn't filled with the way they talked about building us one way and then build us a different way. For which? For the storm cleanup. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Plus, I, I have a neighbor who just had a tree leaning toward their house after that storm and they kept promising to be there and didn't show up and didn't show up. And that happens a lot with, uh, you know, arborist stuff. They get really incredibly busy. You know, John did put in here that he he won't be able to cut the oaks until. And that's correct. Uh, I mean, you're looking November time frame before those oaks are going to get cut yeah. at this time, at this point. Um, oak will. Yeah. I'll just mention that John from Eagle Tree was the person that removed our tree out here. Just so everybody knows that. Super nice to work with. Um, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving Eagle Tree Care's proposal signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, okay, item 14. Um, so I have received um, numerous comments and phone calls regarding the trucks going through the village. Uh, the, I don't know, like, we put up big orange flags. They didn't even slow build. Just, you know, what we need are more streets out in the uh, signs out in the, <coughs> the city. But that would be one proposal. Anyone else have any other anything they want to bring to the table with regards to semi trucks? Well, we could use some larger signs before they make the turn because once they have made that decision to make that turn, either down Greenbrier or Sunset. They're, they're going either way, you know. Um, I don't know if a we 
when you're coming in west on this road is now 66 if like a sign right when you come into our village that says no trucks on on village streets or something like that would make them look for the route a little better I don't I think it's just a confusion on where the route is um, everybody's looking at their GPS and, and I've seen them in the mornings you know I across the street I see them five o'clock in the morning you know they're tired they're it's dark it's not so dark anymore. I have chased some <laughs> yeah, and then what do you do with that? You know, that's the thing. I mean, I, what do you do with that? Is um, exactly right. You can get their their light. I mean, Brian saw me one time run up and you know. Yeah. And, oh, it's I never mean, gonna be the same truck driver. You right, right, right. You know, so I mean, we could either start. We could talk to the sheriff's department and you know start forwarding that information to them and citations. You know, can be issued. Yeah, if you if you can get um, the license plate number, they can right. issue a citation if you but, call them. But the person that sees it's going to need to be the witness for it. Absolutely. So that information he's got there. Other than that, I mean, it's a signage issue. So we can get bigger signs, big old signs. If you, I don't really like the sign pollution thing, but um, the signs are kind of hard to see before you make the turn. Anybody else see it? Anybody, anybody want to make a motion for, I don't know, to, I, I'm not even sure how much they cost. Um, uh, we could go through BSI, Badger State Industries. Do you want I, to contact them? And I can. I've got a contact back through. To how much they what cost. size sign are we looking at, though? I mean, it can vary. You know, if we get it reflective, you know, things like that. You just want me to go with it? I have no idea what I would how do. big our signs are. I just okay. know we've had the same signs for a long time. We've put the orange flags on them. We've replaced the orange flags about 20 times. And Jim Lamar did all of that. No trucks or just basically what they are, just bigger? Or what are we thinking? I don't have a plan. Anybody? Where are the signs on? So there's one on Greenbrier as you come in. There's one on sunset here as you make the turn so um, you have to make the you have both that's the problem you have to, to make the, the turn to see yeah. the sign um bigger ones there i think they're going to be they well they're the regular street size sign they got some old flags on them right now that are pretty much white um usually a trucker is looking for that orange mm -hmm. you know um, i think you have them by ridgewood and hillcrest coming coming back into also mm -hmm. Um, and usually that's not the issue. It's usually when they're yeah. going out. So I think there's six um, of them. Well, how about I just, I don't know, what do you, highway signs, are, are there a certain size for highway signs for trucks to see? You're, I mean, they come in different sizes. I guess right. I would upsize them. But, and where are they placed uh, relative right. to 66? I mean, within 20 feet of, so they're corners. fairly close. I mean, they if, are. if you were turning, if you were stopping to turn, you could see them if you looked. Right, but if you make that decision to turn before you look for a sign, you're you're. Committed. And the only other thing is, are, is there anywhere on 66 where you can put a no left turn for trucks? And that's what my thought I mean, was yeah. for right on our village sign. Can we put? Yeah, I don't know. We can put signs on. Hey, that's a state highway. Not without asking. <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> Yeah, so who do we ask? Who the we city ask? gets the funding for it, don't they, to take care of it? Because we, I from what know. I've always been told, is we give our share of what we would get for taking care of that to the city because they take care of the whole stretch. Yeah, and it would probably be the city to deal with because this is a connecting highway, so oh. the city is responsible. Conrad and Brian yes. both want to. Is that based on Oh, one at that. Shorewood in Madison, Wisconsin has safety bump, a big one, that comes pavement that's nice gradual up. If you go too fast, you fly. Then they have a lit sign that has flashing lights that pops on and reads the vehicle that's coming and tells them to slow down or not to get here. So there's many different. And they are, the sun hits their transformer and lights them up so they get their own energy from the sun. So Sherwood has a good system. McComas has another system with the big pump, but they are out there with lit signs that actually flash when they're needed. It senses the car or the truck. 
I, I think there would be an issue trying to play something like that on 66. I don't know. Um, Definitely. There yeah, be a lot. I, I don't know if that would happen. Unfortunately, it's a state state highway. So Most of the trucks are coming from Warzella or Cops, GPS, and sending them straight mm -hmm. that way. They come out of Warzella's, if you watch yep. their load of books. They turn left, and the GPS is saying that's the way to go. Yes. The lit sign that flashes. <coughs> Are they allowed up Pinecrest now? Oh, that's that's a truck route. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So that is the truck route. That's um, why it maybe was we rebuilt. just need some more truck route signs, mm -hmm. and we can ask the city if we can put a couple down 66 that say follow truck routes. Mm -hmm. Just an arrow. I, I I actually think putting truck route signs in, but that requires them. That would be on city property. I've always thought that that's the best way to go, but that requires mm -hmm. working with the city. Sure. We can couldn't. justify a need, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It might just take a letter and and uh, hey, we'll do it and we'll maintain these signs, or we'll mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. do it if you don't want mm -hmm. us to. But mm -hmm. it's a problem for us, so help. Brian, you wanted to say something. No, I was going to say, is it based on tonnage? If you put a sign up that says no trucks, what's it based on? If you have a furniture delivery or something like right. that. Right. Um, and I don't know if our ordinances even say what it's based on. Um, yeah, it's just, just way too heavy for our roads. And, you know, the the printing place and the, the um, dog grooming place here both get truck deliveries at about 5 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. um, or 6. And, you know, they go right there, and this has never been a reinforced road right here that they're driving on, and but that would restrict a business then. I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, I can look for signs. Um, I'll come up with some ideas for next meeting. Let's make sure we put it on the agenda, though, so we can discuss it. Mm -hmm. And, um, Thank you. Um, the other topic is April snow plowing. So um, we just wanted to make the board aware that our contract with uh, T&K, uh, Ted, um, ended at the end of March. And he called me when we had our big storm, which was, I think, two weeks ago. I think it was on, it was on <coughs> April 1st, right? It was April 1st. Yeah. yeah. And we had, it was like about five inches of snow, if I remember right. It seems so paltry in comparison to this weekend. Um, I talked to Ted, I said, uh, clearly we need to have plowing. I said, but you didn't do anything in November, how about you give us a free pass? And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for you for gas. I said, that'd be great. Well then, Tuesday came, <laughs> and, um, and, and um, that, that doing it for gas argument didn't carry a whole lot of weight at that point. Um, and then this weekend came. Um, and this weekend, I talked to Ted, I think, five times, and I talked to the Wapaka County Sheriff's Department three times or four times. Um, suffice it to say, Ted and I are on a pretty close basis um, at this point. Uh, Ted went in the ditch on the way back to Wapaka, and he, the Wapaka County Sheriff's Department would not allow him to be towed out until I called them, intervened, went up the chain as far as I could and um, got them to agree to allow a company to pull him out as long as they only had to close one lane to do so. Um, but I, you know, used every card I could think of. So anyway, um, Ted came back and, uh, and now his question, I, I, and we're going to get a bill. I don't know what the bill is going to be, but we're going to get a bill. I don't think it's going to be like a whole month. I don't think it's going to be like an additional month. I think it'll be substantially less than that. But um, I don't know if he's going to try to put that tow bill on it. I don't know. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to make that make you guys aware of that. Uh, if it's, I, I'm looking outside past Charm's head, and I'm seeing snow. If you guys have noticed, I'm I'm looking out. I'm looking past you guys. I've been looking at that snow, and it's mm -hmm. it kind Pretty, of. Isn't it? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not the word I was going to use. No. <laughs> I guess on that. I'm sorry, you're done. Yeah, and well, I was just going to say it's supposed to, he and I have been talking about Wednesday, and um, he wanted to know, if, and I said, well, I said, let's talk about it Tuesday night. So, 
it's been sort of a, um, I've been putting it off as long as possible to call him to try to save the cost because my, my guess is we're going to get hit with a couple thousand dollar bill. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, I, that's what I was going to say also, but um, are we supposed to get more snow? Wednesday. We're, yeah. A lot more I had what? heard, no. I'd originally heard three to five, then I heard six to eight. I don't know what it is now. It's so. eight to 15. Is it eight really? to 15. No. No. Yeah. One to 10. One to, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Right. Um, so if you guys yeah. are good with it, I will just continue talking to Ted and yeah. asking him to come when yeah. is necessary. So um, anyway. Uh, it was yeah. stuck the other day. I don't know if you know that. I yeah. did not know that, no. He's plowing into my property, and I went out and said, please, you can do that. I have six feet of red granite. Do it. So now he's really packed it heavy there. He went down the block and made a turn. He only has a small truck compared to what most people and what the Stevens Point people have. He made a short turn, got buried. His plow in the middle he had just put it in, and he busted that. So that was holding him up. Oh, that's where his and wing so got broken. That's where his wing oh, was okay. busted. Yeah. So I saw him because he was just spinning his wheels. He was sitting in the cab till the smoke was going, and I thought, he's got to get out there and shovel. So I took my shovel and went out there and said, <laughs> Thank I'll you. be glad to help you. And I said, you really have to clear these tires so it's down on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And the front end, your wheels shouldn't be turned that way because you're trying to drag them back. you got to straighten out the wheels. Mm -hmm. So we did all of those. And it popped right out. Oh, goodness. Thank you. He was probably Thank very you. tired at that time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guarantee that Ted was very, I very think Connie's tired. going to send you a bill, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not going to send it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we have a two-year contract with him. Yeah. Could we have discussion of maybe pushing a, a two-week grace period into April next year? Yeah. Actually, um, he said that Tom Glaudemann's, because I talked to him about that, and he said, Tom Glaudemann's insisted that it start November 1st. And I said, well, sometimes it snows on November 1st. And he said, but he said, maybe if you want to move it from November 15th to April 15th. Right. And I said, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about it, you know, when we're talking about that stuff October in the fall. So anyway, he okay. wouldn't be opposed to that. He, he would be just fine with that. But then if we get a snow in November, you know, we'll yeah. have it on the other end. So Okay, anyway, I don't have anything else on that. Um on item fifteen, uh the rummage sale date, you know, I'm wondering if that's <laughs> gonna actually happen. Um I we might still have snow banks on May twelfth, but that is the date that we have always chosen for our rummage sale. It is the Saturday before Mother's Day, so all the kids can go buy their mothers presents to cheat. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's the rummage sale date. Uh, Form C got, is this it? Oh, yeah. good, thank you. Um, I didn't make copies. No, I, okay. unless everybody wants a copy. It's uh, mm -hmm. very, it's, it's if you have insomnia, it is a terrific document to read for insomnia. Um, but uh, if you would like to review a copy, Kathy's got it. Um, I know I've taken a look at it. Um, do you want to speak to clerk training schedule for 2018? Okay, I have scheduled myself for some training. Um, although in May I will have been here a year, but I think the training is very important for me to keep pursuing. So I'm going to be going to Manaqua on May 10th to the 11th for some super clerk training. Um, <laughs> So that's two days of training, plus I will get my Board of Review training there also. And then I'm going to Green Bay again this year, just like I did last year for a whole week, um, to get my Clerk 2 certification. I'm trying to get four years in, and I will be certified as a clerk and a treasurer. So this is just going to be my second year. And then in September, there is a meeting at the Holiday Inn about local government. I signed up for it, but um, as it gets closer, I'm going to provide information about this meeting, because it's a meeting that the trustees may want to attend. I think it would be very helpful. So I will pro provide some information about that as it gets closer, but I am pursuing my training. Good. Very good. Thank you. Um, okay, 
thank you card for the affordable tree service. Um, that is for picking, putting up and removing the Christmas decorations every year. The note that Kathy's going to write in in super nice penmanship is right there, and we've all signed it. So um, that goes to affordable for helping us out with the Christmas decorations. Um, approval of the March and April bills. Do we have three signatures? It was like two. Uh, is there only two? No, you signed it. Okay. Sorry. Someone else want to take a look at these? Right here. We need three. We need yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind? Thank you. Okay. So we'll come back to that in a second. Um, just a couple of comments about open book and board of review. We need somebody else to do board of review training. Jim has done it. Um, this and, and Kathy is doing it. We need one more person to sign up for it. And then, as you're thinking about that, I just want to tell you what. I thought we already talked about this, and I've done board review. Is I that just need the DVD to. Okay. Oh, okay. okay perfect. So you're, to yeah. re, re, okay. Re go over. Okay. It. okay. okay. I wasn't okay. sure if you were going to do it again this year. I mean, year. if I wasn't elected, I wouldn't know, right? You, <laughs> you did the training last year, right? I did the whole board review last year. Okay, okay. So then so yours is actually good for two years. Right, but but you need to when see you get that, that DVD. Yeah. And I have it, so yeah. I'll give it to you before you leave. Tonight. And I just have to say, so with regards to open book and board review, you might actually get a little action practice in it this year. Um, we will do our open book and board of review next meeting, and we will start it and stop it very quickly because there's no changes. However, BA Pauls, we've agreed that we're going to have the village is going to be revalued. Um, that will occur in probably August. They will come out in July or August. They'll send postcards out. They will notify everybody in the village. Kathy and I had a conversation with them earlier today. Um, they will come out and they will uh, go attempt to go through everybody's houses and make a revaluation for the village. Mm -hmm. After that is done, then we will have the real, or this, this one is real, but we will have the one where people may actually come to contest. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a possibility. So, sure. I'm sorry. And that'll, sorry. that'll be in late August, early September. Are we required to have a board review after we do a full assessment? Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's the one where well, there will probably be. Sure. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Residents will come to that one. And, 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 um, air their their concerns. Um, so uh, at this point, I'm suggesting that we set this uh, sort of statutory open book board of review next board meeting. Is everybody good with that? We have to do it. We're required to do it. Um, and then uh, we will come back and revisit this in um, probably. You still start at 5:30. <coughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. We will. We just run it at the same time. Nobody sure. shows up for it. So, our uh, traditionally. People haven't shown up for it. Um, and I guess the last thing I want to say is I want to just make a big thank you to Gordon. Um, Gordon's been on the board for 14 years? I think 13. 13 years, long, long time. Um, firefighter and has been on numerous committees. I couldn't even say how many. Um, has done just a tremendous amount of volunteer work um, for the village. And I just want to thank you. And um, I'm hopeful that everybody else in here will join me in a This will be your last meeting, and it honestly won't feel right um, not having you here. Um, you're, you're not the, uh, not the most verbose, but um, have incredible insights. And uh, I love talking with you about stuff after board meetings. So um, do you have any, got any parting comments? Do you want to say anything? I just wanted to point out that we do have a lot of needs in this village, lighting, streets, fire department. I just want to make sure we all remain focused on the fact that we need to address all of them and not be dominated by any one of them. Those are my parting words of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you much. All right, so with that, uh, appreciate it. We need to set our meeting for next month. I presume it will be oh, my in a special meeting also. Um, sure. When do you... When do you want to set that for? I guess, out of respect to, are you wanting to, because we do need three bids. The, the, the cost of this, this, I mean, state law is required to attempt to get three bids. Um, if someone says no, then that's our, 
our third bid, but Milky has not said no. He, had, he did not say no. He seemed to know a bit about uh, Park Ridge. I mean, they obviously, uh, you know, got all, uh, you know, he knew what the land mass was. He knew what the structure, you Interesting. know. So. Um, so when do you want to set a meeting for? What, where are we? We're in the 16th. It's the 16th. I check with Chime as well on her. I'm sorry, what date? Uh, um, we haven't no, 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 figured no, no. it out. Yeah, yeah, that is. Twenty first is the meeting. Uh, next month, the twenty first. Yep. Would be, the meeting. would be the meeting. Yep. Do we want to move a special meeting about the roads out to May, or are we looking maybe end of April? How's everybody feeling? Yeah, uh, we can do it in April. Thirtieth. It's a Monday. Um, I've got a school board meeting. I'm not going to go school. Twenty third. Well, that's next week. Yeah, I've got I've a. Got we have a bunch of school board meetings. Um, special meetings. Would a different day work better for you than like a Tuesday or a Friday? Tuesday. Right. Sure. Tu how about Tuesday, May eighth? Oh. Okay. Um, I have to choose, I guess I'd come to this. <laughs> um, what about the first for that? That's the Tuesday prior. Yeah, um, I have something on my calendar, but I don't remember. Why are we so busy? <coughs> so, um, I don't, how about the third? This Thursday, the third. May three. Does that work for you? Five thirty. Yeah, um, I presume so. Does that work for everybody? May third. May third. Yes, that it works for me. Roads or the third? Roads. Roads. Okay. So the eighth one away. Right. Yeah. Um. So just for uh, to be real clear, who's making a motion for a special meeting? I move that there be a special meeting to uh, deal with the topic of uh, roads. All right, and who's seconding that? I will second it. All right, Steve and Randy, and uh, everyone that's in favor of having a meeting on May 3rd with regards to roads, um, aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Right. Any opposed? Okay, all right. There we go. May 3rd. All right, motion to adjourn. Um, let me get to the, uh, oh, the bills. Yeah. Did you? Okay. Can I make okay. a motion to approve the bills? So moved. Randy and Second. Jim. All right, any discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, okay, motion to adjourn. Gordon? Mm -hmm. Uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> your last, your last motion, the last motion of the last meeting. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right, Steve. All right, all those in favor, aye. signify by saying aye. 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 I would comment it's not necessarily the last meeting. If I decided to read all the minutes, uh -huh. and in April 2012, you have Elmer making a motion, and he died in February. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I don't know how that we'll happened. Try to do better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Randy and Charms to come. For a special meeting, would you want my involvement at all? If you were able to come, I would want it. Because I definitely have some suggestions. I'm not in the gear then. Yeah. For the third. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. 